Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Locum23. You're joining me for Choice of the Stories You Play in the Summer Book 1, Act 3, Chapter 16. Here's to the adventure. Your friends ready themselves in the security office, about to confront the watchers, but just outside in the game room. Alright, I'm opening the door. When I do, everyone full speed ahead. On my count! Diego comes up beside you, his voice quiet. Hey, Logan. I just want to say before it all goes down, thank you for everything. Well, technically, since I saved your life. <laughs> what do you mean? Three. It probably sounds dumb, but I feel like you made my life special, extraordinary. Two. Maybe I was always cut out to be a sidekick, but if so, then I'm glad I was your sidekick. Because, honestly, you've been my hero, so even if I lose you right now, I just want to say thanks. One! You're not gonna lose me, Diego. That's a promise. Jake unseals the hatch. Yeah! <laughs> Storm's out first, let's the others go first. You know what? I'm going first. That's always been me. You lead the charge towards the door. Come on, people, follow me! Let's do this! Hell yeah! Damn, I'd follow you boys out on the battlefield any day. You know, you all didn't say that earlier. <laughs> You're storming in the game room, adrenaline pumping. Ru uh, wait. What? You look around, the game room is completely empty. Not a watcher inside. Where could they have gone? Stella furs her brow. She looks to the ceiling, and her eyes go wide. They're above us! Suddenly, watchers drop down from the ceiling. Maxine, nah! Shumati Bushwan! Chaos breaks out, one of the watchers grabs you in a headline. Rum Kanjit Ivka! A fist clocks the watcher square in the face, knocking him out cold. Come on, Locum. Can't you take care of yourself for like five seconds? Am I bad? Hell yes, you're bad. Now move! Keep pushing forward. We can cut through the ballroom. The group scrambles into the ballroom, only to find yourselves face to face with. A dozen muscular watchers, led by an unmasked one, who swung into your bedroom. Lakesha, Jin. Watchers act on command, spreading out and flanking your group. Stay close, people. Watch each other's backs. Luca, get that! You turn in time to see something launching at you. Michelle tries to tackle you out of the way, but you're both caught beneath it. A large rope net woven from tough vines. Uh, this is what I get for trying to help you. You know what? I saved her life, so this is only you trying to owe me back. That's my fault, how? Hang on, I've got you. Jake whips out a serrated pocket knife and saws his way through the vines. Go, go! Just then, a black, round-tipped arrow grazes Jake's arm. Oh! What the hell? I can't move my arm! The arrows must be tipped with some sort of non-lethal paralytic so they can capture us! Look out! An archer takes aim at you. Her arrow whistles through the air. You can't dodge in time! What the hell is it with our inability to do anything? You wince. Cling! A sound of a gong goes off right in front of you as Raj deflects a paralyzing arrow with a frying pan! Fifteen love chump! Raj, the frying pan with the symbol? You took it with you? I just... I felt like I was supposed to. Nearby Furball is firing ice bolt after ice bolt at the Agile Watchers, but he's slowing down. <coughs> Something is wrong with Furball. He's getting weaker. I think he's used up too much water. We need to get him more. 
You look around and dump a bucket of melted ice on him. Turn on fire sprinklers. Turn on the fire sprinklers. You run to the wall and yank the fire alarm. It starts bleeding a deafening racket. Ugh, what in damnation would you look? Far overhead, the sprinkler system activates and suddenly filling the ballroom with pouring water. <coughs> Furball seems to shimmer with energy. Soon he's crystallizing the rainfall and hurling massive balls of ice at the watchers. One gets plowed over and slammed into a wall. Wow! Good, quick thinking, Locum. <coughs> yes, and even better shooting, Furball. And the chaos, Diego, is not to the floor. Ugh! And Master Watcher moves towards him. No, you will not kill him for the second time! You run, Diego, and get between him and the Watcher. No. Nah, pull the peck, la? Like lightning, he charges you. Fight, run, fight! You hold your ground. Locum, no! What are you doing? Run! You don't have the training! You both can kiss my ass! The watcher sweeps his leg, kicking your feet from under you. You land hard, the wind knocked out of you. Ugh. He's about to grab you, Win. Not cool, bro! Craig body slams the watcher, tackling him through a table centerpiece. Exclamation face. Roger and Grace make a break for the doors. Come on, hurry! The run out of the ballroom. The rest of you try to follow, but another group of watchers blocks your path. Damn it! More of them! Sean, Craig, Jake, and Estella try to lead the group forward, but they're beaten back. It's no use. Those guys are crazy strong. Watchers let their round tip arrows fly. Quinn and Michelle collapse as the paralyzing arrows pluck them square in the chest and bounce off. I can't move. Me neither. We won't hold out much longer. We gotta do something. Well, here goes nothing. A seller reaches into the back of her waistband and reveals. Um, have you been playing Mass Effect Andromeda? Estella, what the hell is that thing? Found in the lockers of the observatory. No idea what it does. And you think it's a good time to find out? Yep. Estella pulls the trigger. In a flash, a person-sized bubble erupts from the tip of the gun and launches across the room. As it whips past, you can see an entire world refracting through it. What the? Watchers panic and freeze. Two of them are caught inside the bubble and instantly vanish. Yippee! Some old mobs with blinding light. Nobody in the room moves, all stunned by what they just witnessed. Sweet. Shames at more watchers and fires. Another flash, another human-sized bubble races across the room, catching two more watchers. The unmasked one, the one who repelled into your room, just barely dies out of the way in time. The others scatter for cover. Everybody go now! We've cleared a path! Help Quinn and Michelle! Craig scoops up Michelle in his arms while Jake and Sean help up Quinn. Together, you barely make out of the ballroom, blocking the doors behind you. Back in the resort's halls, everyone catches their breath. Quinn, are you okay? The feeling in my legs is coming back. I think I can manage on my own. I can walk too. Thanks for asking, Logan. You know, um, just never mind. What the hell is that gun? For a second there, I thought I saw another world through the bubble. 
doesn't look a lot like here, but not quite. I didn't see any people, so it wasn't a mirror. It's like it was shooting some sort of portal. Scanning. My information is dated, but I have a prototype schematic for a similar weapon. It is designed... Is it... Um, it is designated Attack on Accelerator. It is... Objective is to move physical objects forward in time. So we're sending those watchers into the future? Okay, so it's a time travel gun. Sure, why the hell not? The sound of footsteps running up startles you. Someone's coming! A figure comes around the corner. Sara? There you are. Come, quick. We gotta do something. Screw you, dude! You bailed on us! Maybe crucify me later, okay? They took Raj and Grace. Where have you been? You look around and realize Raj and Grace aren't with you. Where? It's starting to lead you to the railing of the tower's central atrium. You look out across the chasm. There. I see them. The Watchers are taking Grace to the lounge on the 15th floor. And there's Raj. They've cornered him in the restaurant on the 13th. No way we can save them in time. We can still make it. We just can't do nothing. We can't just let these people kidnap them. What the hell do we do, Locum? Do we risk our lives trying to save Raj or Grace? Or do we let them... Or do we live to fight another day? Oh, shit. All your decisions will have consequences in future books. Choose wisely. Oh! Oh! I thought this might actually be something where it's like, Oh, shit, we have to actually make a decision. So, you have to literally choose one or the other. So for diamond users and my future diamond edition, that's a dick move. Abandon them both. So for diamond users, well, I guess we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll do a recap, I guess. I'm sorry, we can't save them if we get captured too. We have to leave them behind. No, you can't be serious. I can't save them on my own. Locum, are you sure? It's the right call here. Come on, let's move. Uh, guys? Craig's jaw drops. You turn to follow his gaze, looking down into the atrium. Far below, two dozen more watchers stream in the hotel. They spot you and point, shouting orders. Oh my, there's so many of them. Go, go, we gotta grab the parasailing gear. Everyone runs as fast as they can, reading the storage locker to grab the parasailing gear on the way. Soon, you're back on the hotel tower's rooftop. Quick, block the elevator doors so it can't go back down for them. You realize they'll just climb, right? I mean, they climbed a building. As Alistair and Leela drag garden furniture over to prop the elevator open, you join Jake, who's counting off the parachutes. His face falls. Jake? Oh, what's wrong? We don't have enough shoots for everyone. Oh, and you wanted to save Raj and Grace. Oh, boy. What? What does that mean? It means we have to leave some of us behind. Uh-oh. Zara calls out from the edge of the rooftop. Yeah, so they're climbing up the goddamn walls? And they're going to be here in a minute. Everyone looks around distraught. No one moves. Finally, Sean lifts up a pack and puts it on your in your arms. What? What? No, whoa. Um, I thought I was the one that pulled this off righteous guard, Sean. Damn. You go, locum. I'll stay back. Me too. Shut up, you idiots. Now's not the time to act all noble. Jake is exactly the time. God damn it, fine. I guess I'm staying back too. 
No! We already lost two of our friends tonight. We are not leaving anyone else behind. A lot of us only have known each other a short time, but we've been through so much together, we all can count on this in the crazy place. So, we're not gonna abandon each other now. Your friends all look at each other, finding strength in one another. All right, peeps. Guess it's ride together, die together. If possible, I recommend the former. Well, we're running out of time for a miracle. They're almost here. Indeed, you have approximately 60 seconds to escape. Man, I do not want to go out like this. I want to close my eyes and wake up when it's all over. Wake up when it's all over? Wait a second. Quickly thinking, you grab? Well, okay. So, the key? The, s the sound absorbing conch. The tranquilizing dart. The useless necklace, or the portal gun. Which. My work, actually. Portal gun. Reach behind Estella and pull the time gun from her waistband. We'll use this. It won't work, Locum. There are too many of them. You can't shoot them all quickly. No, we shoot ourselves. <laughs> Who said anything about shooting them? Huh? What are you? Oh. Hold on. You're talking about going through a portal ourselves? We've got no idea where it's going to send us, or when! Michelle is correct. I have no data suggesting where the portal would lead, or if you'd even survive. 30 seconds! But Locum's right. It's the only way we get out of here together. You pull your friends in a tight group hug around you, and aim the gun at your own feet. Furball clings to your legs. Everybody think positive. E envision your goals. No matter what happens, this was one dope-ass vacation, y'all. Oh, please. Don't let me die in a group hug. Uh, that'd be so embarrassing. All right, Boy Scout. Get us the hell out of here. Five seconds remaining. Sean looks at you and nods. Do it. Hang on, everyone. It's to an adventure, eh, Locum? Here's to adventure. You squeeze the trigger. The bubble forms around your legs instantly, expanding to swallow all of your friends. But right as it envelops you, a lasso of vines wraps around Diego's torso. What? Diego! Beyond the bubble, you can make out the Watcher's leader, now on the rooftop, trying to reel Diego out. Oh, you prick! You just don't stop with Diego, do you? As Diego is yanked back, you reach and grab his hands. Diego, hold on! Ah! What's happening? One by one, your friends vanish into the blinding white, winking out of you. Whoa! Holy... Ah! It's only you and Diego left. You hold on tight, even as Diego's now pulling you out of the bubble as well. It's too strong. Diego, just don't let go. They'll just take you with me. Diego, no, don't do it. He meets your eyes, suspended halfway through the quantum cloud. Goodbye, Locum. He lets go of your hands and vanishes. Diego! The blinding, cleansing light engulfs you. It feels like it seeps in your very essence, becoming one with you. And then it recedes. You're still on the rooftop, exactly where you had stood. Your friends surround you, stunned and unsteady. That light, it's gone. So are the watchers. We made it through the portal. Wait, Locum, where's Diego? You tremble, unable to form words. 
they took him, pulled him out. Oh no! Mm. A whirling sound makes you all turn. A little black spherical probe hovers up to the roof. It's Iris! Iris's hologram projects out and warmly smiles. Welcome back, old friends. It has been some time since we last spoke. Iris, when exactly did you last see us? Scanning records. A last interaction on Celestial's rooftop 204 days ago. You're telling us we've been gone for over six months? That is correct. You mean we left Grace in the clutches of those monsters for six months? Not necessarily. It is possible they killed her immediately. We have to go back now! Locum, there must be some settings on their weapon to send us back! You look at the time gun in your hands. It sparks with a blue electricity and smokes. I think it's broken. Maybe something about sending it through its own portal fried it? Alistair's mouth tightens into a straight line. He drops to his knees. <laughs> There's nothing else we could have done. If Logan hadn't saved us, all of us would have been grabbed. The silence falls over your groom. You all look out into the darkness of the forest, wondering if they're out there somewhere. If they're still alive. Raj. Grace. Diego. Great, so we've all lost someone. Fantastic! You didn't find enough clues in the act to unlock the bonus scene. Replay the chapters to find them all. And remember to search all the paths in the story. So, uh, epilogue. Captain's log. Star date. After cautiously searching the hotel, you and your friends reconvene in the lobby. Oh, this is going to continue. Okay. The Watchers must have spent a long time searching for us. A bunch of the sweet doors have all been kicked in. And they went through all the stuff. My suitcase was completely dumped out. Mine too. So, where are they? Did they just, like, give up? Seems like. Guess that means we're safe. I don't count on it. For one, we're not the only ones who went through a portal. We shot some watchers with them, too. So, if they were sent to this time, too, they could already be on their way back to wherever the hell the others went. Correct. And upon their return, the rest would realize it likely means you have re-emerged in the same time as well. We still have some time before anything happens. Let's just try to get a little rest, clear our minds, figure out what we do next. And how we're gonna save our friends. You mean if they're still alive? Everyone splits up. You and Estella notice Alistair and Iris reading something intently by the concierge desk. What have they got over there? Hey guys, what you reading? We seem to have found a note left behind by unknown persons. It wasn't here before, was it? He holds a scrap of notebook paper to you. Twelve letters. Hayden Zodiac. The runes are the key. Lupus. Month by month by month by... Um... So this is the password? Because remember the password was twelve letters, right? Um... Hayden Zodiac. Is this... This is 12 letters. The runes are the key. Lupus. I don't understand the L. Look at the circle. What on earth? Who wrote this? We've been gone six months. Anybody could have come in here. I did not detect any entry to the resort after intruders abandoned their search. What do all these scribbles mean? I... I believe it's a note of someone who's trying to solve the password on my father's computer. The password has 
twelve letters long. The note refers to twelve letters as well. Thanks, computer. We caught that part. Well, uh, what are we waiting for? Let's use these notes and try to get into Rourke's computer. Oh, crap. Rourke's office overlooks a spectacular view of the island and ocean. As the glass at the glass desk, this holographic monitor glows softly. You approach the interface and touch the glass. The screen flashes red. Why won't it... Hello, me. Alistair rests his hand on the glass surface. The screen flashes green and displays DNA match confirm inner password. Whoa, you really are work some. Of course I am. Saying things like that are not true. Is a waste of one's breath. A screen appears, requesting a 12 letter password. Why are those spaces different colors than the rest? Not sure. Let's take a look at that note again. Okay. Okay. So let's let's really absorb this for a moment. Twelve letters equal uh, Hayden Zodiac, and it's sad because we didn't really get to get a good look at you know how many letters is required okay so um, I saw two yellow and then a bunch of white and then another two yellow I believe 12 letters equals Hayden Zodiac which is exactly 12 letters well a Zodiac is 12 signs so that's one letter for each sign that makes enough sense the Zodiac, like, Sagittarius and stuff? I don't believe so. This is referring to the Hadean Zodiac. In geology, the Hadean area is the period when the Earth was first formed, 4.6 billion years ago. And that's different how? At different constellations, which ones appear in the sky over a given spot, change little by little, year over year month after month, or as his note said, month by month. But over billions of years, very different stars may have been visible from Lahardia. So if the Hayden era had different constellations, a zodiac based on the sky would have different signs too. Wait, could that be why the stars are different now? Are we somehow seeing the sky as it was billions of years ago? impossible to determine, but it is a possibility. Oh, the android hesitated. <laughs> okay, great. Twelve letters for Zodiac, twelve constellations for twelve months. The question before us is, which constellations and in which order? And what are these ruins they're talking about? You think back to the dossiers you found across the island. Hang on. Wait, right there. Right here. You race down to your room and find it completely trashed. But there, hidden beneath the dresser, you find where you left them are the dossiers. Yes! They're still here. I don't remember picking up dossiers, but okay. Returning to York's office, you share your findings. Look, these symbols stamped on the pages, I think those are the ruins. Oh! Yeah, who is he? <laughs> yeah, boy, I mean, what? Okay, so this looks kind of like a DNA. Like a DNA symbol, to be honest. Oh, oh, remember everybody that paid diamonds for these? And we get to see it with... Oh, wait, no, this is the one we were able to see. That's right. I was hoping they would go through them all. I was about to be like, see, oh, you wasted diamonds. <laughs> so they were watching all of us, and you neglected to share? I didn't know to trust. I still don't. A fair point. I have seen symbols like this before, carved into some spots on the island. 
Same here, and I think these are key to figuring out the Zodiac. That's all good and well, but we only have two of these reports. What hope do we have solving the puzzle unless we know all twelve ruins? I don't have the other dossiers. I didn't take them. Maybe there is a way to access them. I'm going to laugh my ass off. Company guidelines stipulate that all records are to have a duplicate copy stored by Mr. Rourke himself. You're saying Rourke might have kept extra copies? Where? Iris glides over to a seemingly smooth marble wall. Hmm. Sensing an electronical interface. Yes, this is a safe hidden here in the wall. It is an exact anti-hacking defenses, but projections state I could likely bypass them without corrupting my memory stores. Shall I attempt to open the safe and access the dossier copies? Really? Really? Wait. It's too risky for you, Iris. Maybe we can try this out later. Are you certain? Proceeding! We'll end the chapter. If you would like to keep trying, stay in the scene. You can play other choices books while leaving this pause. Oh, that's new. That is new. So that's kind of like if you wish to come back and you've earned enough diamonds or something because this is this must be like crucial shit for diamond players. Um, kind of unfair for the rest of us, but I digress. Um, so as everyone knows right now, this is our non-diamond edition because we're saving diamonds for um, doing diamonds editions and special you know, b books that do come out. Um, so unfortunately, in chapter. Very well. Perhaps the answer will come to us. Let's get out of here. Coming. As you fall in the elevator, an anxious feeling comes over you. The door slides shut, leaving you wondering just how close you were to a discovery that would have changed everything. If you would like to revisit the epilogue later, please select Restart Chapter. End Book means you would have to restart from that Chapter 1 if you wish to return to this epilogue. However, you have to complete the book with or without the password in order to import your save into Book 2 coming soon! <laughs> it just... it can't be over! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um... Wow. Oh. So, I'm looking forward to book two. I don't know about all of you. And, as I said, the, uh, timey-wimey <laughs> bullshit. So, we're not in the future. We're billions of years in the past. So, these are kind of like the cavemen, or avatar people, that were living on the planet before... You know, probably like the dinosaur age. It's no wonder there's a saber tooth tiger. Sad face for Furball, um, because if he's a prehistoric entity, if we go back to the present, does that mean we take him with us, or does he die? And that would also make sense because the um, when the asteroid hit, it wiped out most of life on the planet. So if he didn't die from that, he died from lack of water. So yeah, that sucks. Um, but that's purely scientific, um, theoretical thinking in a fictional, <laughs> you know, in a game. Um, so I hope you all did enjoy. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Sorry it took me a little longer to get this out. Uh, pretty much I hadn't slept in a couple of days trying to solve the computer issues, so I could get back to doing this. And then also doing The Walking Dead and everything, so I had to at least close my eyes for a couple hours. Um, that and Pixel Bear was a little later than usual, so at least they didn't take the whole day, but... Uh, I, in all of my opinion, I wish they would have, but I digress. All right, well, I hope you all did enjoy, and until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.